God. <laughs> Miss Subtlety, <laughs> Kelly Oubre, friends. This is his first 17 threes of the season, but he made it And Ooh. Kent Bazemore is hyped. <laughs> then Steph yes. hits a pull-up. Watch this. We're going to see more of Bazemore. Brian Bench, Baze is back. I don't think there's anything. There's no alternative here. <laughs> hey, listen, after the way this road trip started for the Warriors, they come out of this thing two and two. I'd be hyped, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> I feel like... Well, like ba- baseball been that way, Rachel. That's what I was going to say. He's been that way for the Golden State Warriors. I feel like he's yep. back in his natural habitat, that I love that he's back on this team. <laughs> it fits right, it's right like he never left. Make agility. Magic Thunder. Lou Dort gets crafty on the break. Look at this. Mm. He's not Dort. just a defensive you, machine. You know, Lou Dort... Look, this is no, Isaiah Roby. Putting... Breaking Vucevic's ankles and dunked it. So which one, Perk, do you like better? Mm. Ooh. I, I, I'm, I got to roll with Luke Dark. I'm a fan of Luke Dark. He's been strapping up people, but he's been getting buckets, Rachel. I got to go with Luke Dark on this one. Yeah, Roby's was like more impressive of a finish, but Dort's had a higher degree of difficulty. So I'm going with Dort. Nice. Miss stopping ball. Let's go back to Detroit. James Wiseman, Black and Plumley's floater, then takes it coast to coast. Euro steps. Watch this. Because after that, he's going to dunk. Brian, thoughts on Wiseman so far? Rachel, this was one of the most exciting plays I've seen this season. This was a Giannis Atenacumpo level play. Ooh. Defense Ooh. transitioning to offense. Look at that body control. Oh, my God. Was this an exciting play? I would go so far as to argue that play was the most important thing the Warriors saw in that game. Huh. Mm, mm. Wow. Brian with the high take. I got, but I have to agree with him, Rachel. Wiseman is special. Look at his footwork. He's a versatile big. He reminds me a little bit of Kevin Garnett. I think he's going to win rookie of the year. Look, you and I both love that pick, Perk, so we'll see how it continues to pan out. Make effort. Raptors Sixers, <laughs> Alex Len missing the free throw, flies Stanley Johnson in for the putback. Perk, did you ever do this? <laughs> no, nah, I wasn't. He missed I the free throw. Athletic. <laughs> I Brian made the free throw, but I wasn't athletic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wendy, at least I shot about 60% from the, that from was the free throw line, That's which strong. was okay for a big man. But I, was, I wasn't athletic enough, Rachel, to do that, You just saw Stanley though. Johnson's best play as a Raptor. That's Aww. how good of a play that was. Wow. Why is feisty today? You know what seeing this play it. did. It. it got our producer, Bodmer, to come to, to you guys are back in the lab, compiling the best run it back, free throw put back number five. 1993, Stacey Ogman off the Kevin Willis miss. Woo! Mmm. Back in the old Stacey days. Stacey Augman. Oh. Elevation. Ooh. I wouldn't say the old days, though, Rachel. 93 was the best years <laughs> of ever right there in the 90s. I know who I'm talking to on this show, Perk. 2003, Ricky Davis oh. going baseline for the flush. Pretty Ricky. Mmm. Ricky Davis. Brian, People you- forgot about Ricky Davis and, and how athletic he was. Let me just say, I was at that game. That's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> 1990, Michael Jordan. Any highlight that ends with Michael Jordan, you know is a good one. This is an iconic play. Right? Out Mm. the way, and the face, come on! Oh, nice! So good! (laughs) 97, rookie Allen Iverson, aw, against the Sonics, and look what that man does! Uh I didn't remember this play. This was a heck of a play, Rach. You know, they call him the answer for a reason, Brian. I should have known AI mm-hmm. was going to be on this. Yes. Shout yes. out to Seattle. <laughs> it's, Chris, it's Christmas, Perk. I deserve something good, and so do the people of Seattle. We need the Sonics back. All right, 2006, Desmond Mason cleaning up after Tyson Chandler. This is great. Look at that. Mm. Desmond Woo. Mason was an, was an all-time great dunker, not remembered as he should have been. One great hand dunk. with I agree. the twist. I agree with that. And, and when you, Rachel, when you talk about snatching the screws out of the rim, Desmond Mason was the true definition of that. <laughs> I love it. All right, guys, I want to get to a couple players who are familiar with making highlight reels. Bradley Beal, Russell Westbrook, 
Both players have experienced success individually. Beal ranking third in scoring at 32 points a game so far this season. Westbrook logged a triple-double in all three of his games. But that has not translated into winning yet, as the Wizards fell to 0-4 last night. Following the home loss to the Bulls, Russell Westbrook posted this on Instagram with a caption quoting Martin Luther King Jr., quote, The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. So, Perk, I know you were high on the Wizards entering this season. You said they're making the playoffs. What is wrong with the way they're getting off to this start? Well, I'll tell you what, it's nothing to do with them offensively. Right now, the Washington Wizards can't guard senior citizens at a nursing home <laughs> at recess. They are just horrible <laughs> on the defensive end. And it starts, it starts with Russ and Bradley Beal, the two captains, the two franchise guys. They have to set the tone because right now, Teams are getting whatever they want on the Washington Wizards on the, on, offensively. So defensively, they have to step, step it up. They have enough offensive power to score points. They're going to do that. But they got to start playing some defense and hanging their hats on the defensive end. And me knowing Scotty Brooks, he is not pleased right now. He's going to drill them in film, and they're going to pick it up. I'm not going to panic. They're going to pick it up on the defensive end. And by the way, they're going to get Rui Hachimara back with you which will be huge for them, and they'll be okay. Yeah, I know that their defense has got to improve, but the other thing is Westbrook, he has good overall numbers, but his offensive efficiency has plummeted. Hmm. His shooting is way down from where it has been. He's averaging eight less points a game than he did uh, last year in Houston. He's taking so many mid-range shots. The spacing is off. He is not getting to the foul line. He's getting the foul line three or and a half times less than he did last season. Um, Scott Brooks has been looking at different lineup changes. They are not getting efficient production out of Russell Westbrook, and that has got to be something you have, especially if you don't have a very good defense. And he did, Scott Brooks did change the starting lineup in the second half last night, and he, he put Davis Bertans out there with Westbrook trying to get uh, more spacing, uh, but it's not working. Westbrook has got to be more on the attack, and they've got to help him do that. And I'll tell you what, if Scotty Brooks doesn't get that aligned and fixed, we're going to start hearing rumblings because this team is under pressure to win immediately with the Westbrook trade and Bradley Beal's contract situation. And that's what I was going to ask. And I hate asking this question. Everyone around the league is so fond of Scotty Brooks, but how hot is that seat given that Washington as a franchise has made it clear they want Bradley Beal there for the duration, but Bradley's made it clear he does eventually need to start winning. Well, Ted Leonsis has never been a guy who's got a hair trigger finger. He's always supported um, his coaches and general managers, maybe even to a fault, both with the Cavs.